The Climate Prediction Center is now forecasting one of the top five strongest El Ninos on record. We saw some of the impacts what El Nino could do this past weekend. We're looking at the precipitation totals from Friday through that Monday time frame. We had a massive swath of two to four inches of very heavy rain essentially from Florida all the way to Maine. In fact, this was essentially a big tropical storm they've got they had 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts some of these wind gusts in massachusetts were upwards to 90 miles an hour in fact they had 120 miles an hour in mount washington but some of these areas got inundated with very heavy rain in fact south carolina had up to 13 inches of rainfall in some areas and up here towards maryland they had another six inches and very heavy rainfall just yesterday in Maine, we had this system as this system was coming up the East Coast. Look where the source came from, folks, all the way into the deep tropics. We had a massive surge pulling in from the tropics and lifting all the way into Maine. And that's why combined with all the snow melt of late in Maine and then all the very heavy rain caused extensive flooding and widespread roads and bridges uh, washed away. So they had massive problems. And still this morning, we're still dealt with almost up to 600,000 in New England still without power. So they had literally almost a million people across the Eastern seaboard at one given time without power. And still they're dealing with the issues. And then heading into the week ahead, all eyes will be trending out west as we have yet another powerful storm system but now it's going to be impacting the west coast and they're very going to get inundated with very heavy rainfall so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily content on this channel and i would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content so let's talk about this el nino right so here's what we talk about when we're talking about an el nino this is all the warm waters right and all the way down here into the pacific ocean here as these systems dive southbound out of the aleutian islands it draws further south and it's able to tap into this abundance amount of moisture and pull some of that moisture and inundate it and lifting it into the west coast and that's exactly what's going to happen with this system going forward you see all this abundance amount of moisture just south of hawaii that's the piece of energy that's able to tap into so as these lows come down off the west coast and they're going to be trending further and further south the deeper in this el nino that we get they're going to be able to draw into some of this higher water content value of air and that is going to be the culprit of very heavy rainfall and it all starts tomorrow in california in fact they've already got marginal and slight risk for excessive rainfall that inundates from portions of san francisco drops all the way down south into uh, san luis obisco and then it extends into the Santa Barbara region, down here into Los Angeles, down here into Long Beach, going into the Santa Ana region in Anaheim during the day on Wednesday, and then compounding that as that low keeps dropping further south and gets a little bit closer to the coast, yeah, we up the rainfall estimates, and now we're talking a moderate risk for excessive rainfall across portions of Santa Barbara into the Los Angeles region down to Long Beach but now those areas down into Oceanside down into San Diego are going to start getting the heavier rainfall on Thursday so if we break this thing down for you but literally between now and say Friday morning just on the blend of the models this is your blend of all the models of the data that's coming in yeah we could be looking at a pretty good swath of heavier rains from an inch starting into the San Jose region down to two to three inches as you extend further south you get into the Oxnard you get into the Los Angeles region yeah easily possibly four to six inches of heavier rainfall down to Riverside into Oceanside even into San Diego could pick up two to three inches of heavier rain look at Yuma they barely get a couple inches for the entire year and they're expecting over an inch 
of rainfall into that region. And if we expand the view, look at the entire state of California just being crushed with a good two to four inch swath. This is the same data that we are actually seeing the East Coast get hit. And then some of these isolated areas along the East Coast ended up picking well above that. I mean, places in South Carolina got picked up 13 inches of heavy rainfall. They were under a flood emergency at one given time. So yeah, that could easily happen out here into the West Coast. So definitely be on high alert because this is gonna be extensive rainfall, another high wind threat as we go into tomorrow, Thursday, and then lifting into that fr Friday timeframe for the rest of the country, we're watching two pieces of energy, one out ahead of the storm. So we've got an abundance amount of moisture. We've got this subtropical type lift coming out of the Pacific. Very warm, mild air this week ahead of Christmas. And that warm surge feeds into Texas. We're likely going to be seeing some heavier rainfall into north and central Texas, back into east Texas, extends through Oklahoma, through portions of Missouri. And then by the time we head into deeper on Friday, now that system's going to be coming into the, the south, uh, Southern California, but now reaching into places like into the Phoenix region, we'll start getting some of that some of that rainfall so and this is going to have some some water content values that are fairly fairly high not off the charts but a gap 1.5 to about 1.75 inches of uh, possibility uh, per hour rainfall rates with this system so it's going to be able to tap into some of that gulf moisture as you got that more subtropical type lift coming out of the pacific and then yes as we get into that saturday time frame ahead of your christmas eve now that system is going to be getting closer to portions of new mexico and then that's when we're going to start branching off and looking at it two different phases because you're going to have a southern flank of it that's going to be your warm sector that's going to be draped across texas lifting through oklahoma lifting through the dixie alley region and then to the northwest side of there that's going to be your colder sector there's not much colder air but this is in the mountain regions so yes, it will be cold enough to snow. So going into your Christmas Eve time frame, it's likely going to be snowing into portions of Flagstaff, back into the Santa Fe region, into the Rockies through Utah, and then getting up into the Wyoming region. If we break it down, where who could possibly see a white Christmas? Here's some of the snowfall where the snow could be falling for your Christmas Eve and your Christmas Day time frame. So it's likely going to be impacting portions of Arizona, through New Mexico, through uh, Colorado, back down to Utah, up here to Wyoming, and then possibly extending into South Dakota, as well as into western portions of Nebraska. But other than that, it's going to be a warm Christmas Eve, folks. In fact, we could actually have up to 12 record high temperatures for Christmas Eve, your 24th time frame, as that warm surge pulls all the way in the middle of the country with that warmer Pacific milder air coming in. And with that, we could be looking at some 50s for highs all the way up as far north as Iowa, back into Illinois, even portions of Minnesota, like Minneapolis could be at like 48 degrees. That's crazy stuff. That's like 20 to 25 degrees above average where you typically are this time of year even wisconsin upper 40s <laughs> for them but further south this is probably the last thing you want to hear as possibilities of severe storms for your christmas eve because look at the dew points folks i mean we've got dew points in the 60s that's like prime time for potential severe storms especially as a dynamic system comes in from the west so yeah, when you're looking at dew points in the 60s, yeah, for this time of year, that means your overnight lows are higher than your average high temperatures for the day. That's never a good sign in December, folks. That typically spells trouble, and we are going to be looking at potentially some severe storms as we head into that Sunday night time frame. Nothing yet from the Storm Prediction Center, but we do have from the computer learning models 
kind of a hint of this instability tapping into some of those ingredients. We're likely going to be seeing some of those start to turn severe into eastern portions of Texas, into eastern Oklahoma, as well as into Arkansas, bleeding into Louisiana, getting down here in the Dixie Alley region. This is likely going to be your most favorite area to possibly see some severe storms that you got to be concerned about going into that Sunday night time frame. If we kind of go beyond that, right? We go a couple days, a day or two beyond Christmas for your Christmas week, the Christmas week, your last week of the of the year, we start to see some colder air finally coming back in the pattern. We're going to be seeing that system further south, right? You got the Pacific flow from the south. This is your rain, but further north, this is a little bit of a cold pocket aloft. This is going to be drifting southeast, and as it does, there are some hints of the data. We got to be looking at two little vorticities. You got the southern flank, you got the northern flank, and there's some hints that this could actually dive southeastward and then bleed into the mid-Atlantic region out ahead of this Pacific moisture. So this is going to be surging from the south, coming in a couple of days after Christmas, the cooler, cooler anomalies finally coming back, but we've got to even have a colder push push your air coming in from the northwest down to the southeast there are some hints that this could actually uh, get out ahead of this system and if it does this will be some shallow colder air and shallow colder air sinks to the surface pacific air rises so if that situation unfolds we could have the possibility of an ice storm could unfold just a couple of days after christmas now right now I'm not saying this is going to happen. So this, a lot of the timing has to come together. So that colder air has to come in out ahead of it. It is going to be cold enough. So it's, the air is going to be sink. It's dense and it sinks. That means it sinks to the surface that this warm air overrides that. And that spells trouble. This warm air falls into the colder air and that would spell trouble with ice at the surface. But overall, we're looking at a colder trend after Christmas for your Christmas week, as finally we start to see some of the ensembles looking to hint, and we kind of talked about this, this would potentially happen for your Christmas week, as some of the ridging starts to finally back off and tries to get that ridge up over Alaska, allow that colder air to sink underneath. So this is kind of a transition week, if you will, coming in from the backside, coming in off the west, lifting in from the northeast, and then that would spell a little bit colder anomalies as we go into your Christmas week for next week as that colder push of air would sink underneath going into the southeast up here into the northeast. This is your overall EPS guidance as we go extending into your Christmas week heading towards your New Year's Eve time frame. The GFS is also kind of hinting at the same thing. And this has actually been trending a little bit colder Kind of with every update so we'll be talking a lot more about this but we got a mild week out ahead of us with a rainy week ahead and we'll be dealing with all that and then next week we'll have to be concerned about some ice potential storms as colder air will finally start to enter back in the picture so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update why protect you before and after the storm